How's it going guys? So we're back to work on the notch in. Now I've still got some work to do on the open hatch version, but the main work we finished in the last video. In this video, we're gonna work on the main modifications, the main portions of the build that we're gonna work on here for making the Gelgu custom version, and specifically the Regelgu custom version. So what we need to do is make a way for these shoulder armor parts to fit onto the side of the body here. We need these thruster bells, which are just scrap thruster bells, which I think were from the Psycho Zaku, leftovers from that. For these to fit up inside here, like the Regelgu has some thruster bells. It actually has, I think, three up inside its giant shoulders, but we're just gonna do one since it's just sort of like an SD, sort of chibi version of a Regelgu. So it's still gonna have the same effect of having the giant shoulders. Uh, but what we're also gonna do to push the Regelgu vibe of this is also make, we we'll have to build a backpack out of some spare parts and scrap building to make a backpack that is close, as close as we can to the actual Rigogu backpack, how that looks. So we're gonna start with the shoulders first. And basically what I'm gonna do is kind of scratch build a piece, which is sort of similar to the usual kind of piece that you would usually use for connecting like an HD shoulder joint, where you have a piece that's fitting in here with a hole in it that would basically slide over the arm peg here. So what we're gonna do first, whoops, careful with that, is this ball joint here, I just need to shave this down to just turn this into a straight peg. So that then once we build the connector piece, it'll just be able to slide onto this part here on the shoulder. All right, so once that's done, now we need to figure out kind of the placement of this. Now, if I have the connection just directly below where that kind of circle is, so for example, if it's set just directly underneath the where the connectors are there, then that means it would sit about here, which is a little bit far. I want it a little bit closer to the body, so I need to make it so that the connection or is actually a little bit set inside there. So what I did was I just cut off a piece of a runner that is the right size that will fit into the holes here just to connect between these. So I'm gonna see how long does this need to be and looks like about like that. So I'm just go ahead and cut that. And actually that length is a little bit short. I think I'm gonna cut another piece a little bit longer. So there we go, that fits in there nice and well. And now pretty much what we're gonna do is kind of similar to what we did for the G40, where I am gonna stick a piece of plot plate and then to this like that. So what I need to do is to uh, file one side of that circular part to make it a little bit more flat so that we can glue a piece of plot plate to it. And then what we'll do is then just drill a hole through the plot plate here and then that hole will fit onto here and it'll be all good. So once I got one side of that flattened out, what I'm actually gonna do before I just glue this piece onto here, which is gonna be like the connector piece that I said we're going to drill into, I'm gonna put one more piece in between there just to make this a little bit farther set deeper into the shoulder, like I said, so we can make sure that we've, uh, we can get the shoulder close to the body. So I'm going to glue one piece on, just a, it's just a piece of one millimeter thick plot plate. By the way, I'm gonna glue one piece onto there first, and then we can glue on our piece, which will be our actual connection piece that the, we'll drill into. So there you have it. That will act as our connection piece for the shoulder. Now I think you need to give this, this uh, glue some time to dry, so I'm gonna go ahead and set that down. I'll make the other one for the other arm as well, and then we'll come back to that. So in the meantime now, let's work on some simple modifications to the head. So I've got this Gelgoog head part that we're gonna stick onto the top of here. Now what we need to do first is just get this little nub out of the way. So I'm just gonna do a simple chop chop on that one here. Pop, there you go, that's gone. Now we just need to clean that up a little bit. All right, well enough, flat enough. Now this one also has some little stuff going on here and I want this to be flat. So what I'm gonna do is just cut this part off but then I want to go ahead oof, and file this so it's basically a flat surface across here so that we're just getting rid of this uneven edge there. All right, so this bit is flattened out, but I actually kind of changed my mind as to what I'm gonna do. What I wanna do is just cut a groove here in the back of the head for this to just kind of slip into the back of there. So I just went ahead and marked that and we're just gonna go ahead and just cut that open. Sorry for bumping the camera. So I'm just going to use my big knife just to get the job going and then we'll, we'll shore it up here in a moment. All right, so there you go. That's cut out and cleaned up a little bit. Now this fits in there just right like that and we'll be able to glue that in place 
and that looks just right. Now the problem is I cut this hole a little bit too wide, so there's a little bit of a gap. Uh, it's like hey, less than, if it's centered, it's like less than one millimeter, it's like half a millimeter on each side. That's a little bit of a gap there, so I'm thinking probably just leave that, but what I may do is maybe just use some like half millimeter plot plate and stick that in there and you know, I can turn that into something, I don't know, we'll see. But in the meantime, that fits in there and I think, you know, just gluing that in will probably work well enough. But before we close all this up uh, and like remove the little seam line here and there, the one thing that I do also want to do is give this a mono eye, of course it needs a mono eye. So what we're going to do is I'm going to drill a hole through the eye part here and then we'll use a piece of a uh, piece of runner to stick it through there and then that'll be sticking out just a little bit and that'll act as our mono eye piece so that we can then uh, maybe use a clear lens part maybe on that, that'd probably be pretty cool. So I first am just going to mark the center there for that and I think what I'm going to have to do is maybe drill in through the front and then out through the back as well. Because of the weird angle of that part, I think if I drill in from the front then I can at least know or better know where the hole is going to be. So you can see from the back, it's going to be a little bit hard to get to there where that hole is supposed to be because it's like at a weird angle. So I want the piece to be like kind of sticking straight out, but because that's at a very odd angle, it's going to be a little bit tricky, I think. All right. So the hole is drilled and thanks to recently building that Miku kit, I've got some clear pink plastic that I think will work very well. So just go ahead and stick in here. So I'm just going to cut this and I'm going to actually use the fact that this has this kind of stuff going on here at the end uh, to that will help kind of actually hold this in place actually so just trim this down a little bit and I'm going to intentionally leave it a little bit long and not cleaned up there at the end but if we push this through the back end there we go you can see that will go through and fit right in there like that now obviously that's way too long as it is so I have to cut that down to size but you can see pushed all the way in there the fact that I left a little bit there at the back that will just help to just kind of stop that keep that in place now there's a couple ways that I could go with this uh, one leave this part out until the end and then stick it in there but then I want to get rid of the seam line over here so I want to be able to just close this up permanently so the other option is just have it in there and then just when I'm doing all my painting and everything just make sure it's masked covered up so that I don't so that I can preserve this uh, clear pink uh, plastic and the third option would be to stick an LED inside here so that this can actually light up so I'm gonna look into that I don't I'm not good with LEDs I don't have any experience with that but I think if I can just buy just like a one simple like LED thing uh, and then just cram that into here as long as it lights up and like I can have the switch like out the back end or something like that I can just cut a little hole for a little button for the switch for that if I can just sort that out then this will be really cool and this, the mono eye will actually light up now as for this end sticking out obviously I need to cut that to the correct length and also uh, once it's cut off it's kind of like looks kind of bad right but we can actually polish that down so that it actually looks much better so first off just going to cut this to where I think it's going to be the, the right length. I actually think that's just right about right there so it's just kind of just barely sticking out but then to get it all nice and shiny we can just uh, sand it so I'm just gonna progressively sand it with uh, lighter and lighter sandpaper so this first one is uh, like 600 grit and then I'll use something lighter and lighter until we get that nice and shiny again. Alright and then just for a temporary test here I'll just test it out with my UV flashlight and you can see that's looking pretty cool so I think I'm definitely going to look into putting some sort of LED in this just to light that up because that looks really awesome so really happy with how that came out that came out really nicely now we need to have a antenna on the front of the head right so let's do that now you might think it would be easy enough to just like cut off that little connector peg on the bottom there and then just glue this right here onto the top of the head but unfortunately this part there in the center is like a curved it's like a kind of uh, sort of pipe detail if you can see that anyway so what we need to do is flatten that out and there's a couple ways that we can do that but I think what I was going to do was just use a, a chisel here and just chisel the top of that just to flatten it out but I think because it's a raised enough detail I think I can just use a file for that which will be much easier 
So we'll go ahead and just clip that off just so we have a flat piece here to work with with this. And I was just gonna flatten off just like the front half where this needs to be stuck on, but I think what we'll do is just flatten off the whole top part here on the top of this. I think that'll just be easier and it'll work. Okay, then once we got that flattened out there on the top, just gonna just glue this on there. Simple as that. And hopefully it'll stay on. Obviously, this is gonna be, be probably prone to falling off or breaking off easily. So if that happens, then I'll try something else. Probably have to put a tiny little pin in there to help it stay in place. But in the meantime, I think this should work well enough. All right, looks pretty good. And then with the back of the head part in there will be something like that. So yeah, I think it looks pretty good. Now let's go back to the shoulders and get those squared away. Now obviously later on we'll have to get rid of the seam line here on the Gelgoog shoulder parts as well, but we can worry about that later. So you can see how that's gonna fit in there and it doesn't, it's not exactly straight at the moment. I think my peg on this one is a little bit too long. But anyway, we can at least get the idea and we can sort out where this is going to go on here. So basically the hole just needs to be just right there in the center top of that so that this can just fit right over the top of there. All right, that looks good enough. Should be pretty, pretty easy. So once the hole is done and like we have it all so that it's actually set in place, I can make this whole part look a little bit prettier as well. Cause as it is now, I mean, it's just this kind of ugly square thing and it's gonna be hidden under the shoulder. So not that visible anyway, but we can make it look a little bit better than how it looks at the moment. All right, so I think that size looks about right. Now the problem is we have this other little bit kind of sticking up at the bottom, but I want to keep that in, I want to keep that where it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill another hole down just below that and just cut out a little section here so that we can preserve that little bit of detail there underneath the main peg. Something like that there. So let's try it out. The moment of truth, trying to see if it fits. Now, likely something's not gonna fit quite right, so that just tends to happen. We'll sort it out, but we'll see. I think this should work pretty well. So that should fit in there and that should fit underneath there like that. And actually, it fits on really well. Uh, just right onto there like that. And perfect, there we go. And it's actually still a little bit farther away from the body than I would like. So I may take this apart and add another little stack of plot plate in there just to make this so this will, the shoulder, the shoulder will sit closer to the body because there's still a little bit more of a gap there than I would like. But as you can see up inside there, that fits really nicely. And then of course still plenty of room for the thruster belt to fit up inside there. So yeah, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust that a little bit more by uh, just maybe stacking up a, a, maybe two more millimeters of plot plate just so that that can, the shoulder armor can sit closer to the body. But so far, yeah, that's working out really well, I think. So, all right, cool stuff. Now, before we get into the backpack, which is gonna be the crazy fun part, we need to figure out the way that we're going to have these thruster bells stuck up inside the shoulders here. Now, I think I thought of the way that is going to be extremely easy. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to, once again, rely on our good old drill, drill a hole into this inside of the shoulder armor up in there. Just gonna drill a hole right into the side of this just because it's gonna be hidden up inside there. It doesn't really matter where it's actually connected here or here. Uh, so just drill a hole into the side of there, get a piece of little, just a brass rod, and then just pin it right there onto the inside of the shoulder. So it'd actually be connected onto this surface on the inside of there. Makes sense, easy enough, I think so. There's our hole in there. Now just the same thing into the side of here. There we go. Now that is in there as well. And I just got some 1.5 millimeter brass rod. And so that should just fit in there between them. And voila, ah, ha, ha. This, when the simple things work out, it's such a nice feeling. So that's a little bit long. I, I think I maybe want that to be maybe just a little bit closer. I can cut that a little bit later on, but that works perfectly and I'm super happy. Wow, this is just working out so well. I'm really happy. But now we're getting to the really hard part, which is the backpack. So I'm basically looking at some reference images here. So first of all, thank you to Supreme Mecha Blogspot, whoever's blog that is, uh, for the reference photos. 
uh, using the HGUC kit as a reference. And basically what I'm gonna do is just uh, use some plot plate to basically scratch build the core main center part of the backpack and then I can use option parts and things to add on to that to basically make it look close to what it is. Now I'm not worried about it as this whole thing, I'm not worried about it being exactly accurate to the Regalgu. I just want it to capture the essence of Regalgu. So I'm just going to make it so that it's something close to that. So just to get kind of the general size and shape of this, I'm just kind of sketching it out here on my piece of plot plate. And so it's generally going to be something like that. So once we get this uh, cut out, we can work out all the angles and everything. But for now, I'm just going to cut out pieces of plot plate and just stack them up just to get the good height. And I could have just like actually built a box, but I think this will be easier. I just stack this up and then basically cut and shave the shape down to the shape that we need. So it's kind of like carving something out of a block of marble, sort of, if you will. So I'll give my block of plastic some time to dry out and then we can get to chopping away at that and everything. All right, so now that I've given this some time to dry, I can start whittling away. I basically just need to get the general shape and then we'll work on the angles and everything. So it's just gonna be a matter of just kind of cutting away at this little by little. It's kind of thick. I don't think I can really get too far with this with my nippers, unfortunately. So I might have to even saw it. All right, after some work, there is the general shape, and I realize it's gonna be maybe a little bit hard for you guys to see as it's all in white, but uh, and yes, I did get a little boo-boo. It's not from working on this kit, that was from washing the dishes. I cut my finger while washing a knife. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna use this vent here for the center kind of vent. Actually, this one's gonna be like there in the center. And then for the kind of camera on there, I've got this spare part, which I believe was from a victory kit, well, from an HD victory kit uh, that I'm gonna put up on the top of there. But I don't wanna just set it on the top, I want to kind of set it in a little bit. So I'm gonna use a chisel to carve that out a little bit first. But let me get this vent on here in the center first so that I can make sure that it's not gonna be interfering with that. So once again, I'm just kind of sketching out the area where I want to chisel away to set this part into place there. And once again, after just going at this for a while with my uh, two millimeter BMC chisel here, finally emptied out a space where that little camera piece can then sit inside here. So it's fit in there like that. And I need to put a piece behind here. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and glue a piece of plot plate onto the back of this just to cover it up the back. But I'm thinking if I'm gonna put an LED on the inside, I may want to turn this into a place for light to come out for the LED as well. So I think that'll be pretty awesome actually. So this is just gonna be like a temporary fix and I'll see, you know, if I end up wanting to do that, what I'll, the problem is what I'll have to do is then drill a hole out through the back of that and then through the back of here and then down into there so that it basically make a way for light to channel up through there. It'd be a little bit tricky, but I'll see about that if we can maybe make it so that light is coming out this camera in the backpack as well. We'll see. Now this backpack also has these kind of circular bits out to the side, so I'm just gonna use this part here. This is just, uh, I could use actually just some uh, plastic pipe over there. I do have some of that, but this is actually from left, just leftover parts from a uh, just a wave tank option parts. So I'm just gonna cut two equal pieces of this and then stick them on the sides here, stick a plot plate on the side of there as well, just to cover that up. And yeah, so we'll just make the parts here for the side. So first I need to just, once again, saw a couple of pieces off of this. <laughs> Okay, actually I changed my mind. I am going to use some wave pipe. Uh, this is a seven millimeter wide pipe and just, uh, yeah, anyway. So seven millimeter pipe, I'm going to cut some couple pieces off of here. All right, so we got the two rings there cut out. So once we cap these, they're just gonna go on the side of the backpack 
here like that. I'm just gonna go ahead and glue a piece of plot plate to the end of that and then once that's dry we can cut out around the edges and just kind of round it off a little bit just so that it's nice and clean for the sides of the backpack there. So while those are drying before we can finally finalize those and then we're gonna have to have these two tanks here as well. It's got like two smaller fuel tanks but I'm gonna oversize them a little bit just for the sake of it. Uh, just using these two parts here. Once again these are just leftover tanks from uh, wave option option tanks. Uh, and so I'm just going to fix these up because as you can see now they're just kind of like roughly cut off from whenever I used them before I don't even remember but clean these up so that these can be pinned to the backpack uh, here and here essentially onto there like onto there like that and that'll be kind of like the final thing that we need to do here for the backpack so I'm gonna get these cleaned up and I think that'll be it for this video because we've got a lot of stuff that just kind of needs to be cleaned up once some glue is drying. So that's going to be it for this video. So we're kind of like in the final stages of just getting everything done for like the main modifications on this guy. And so in the next video, we'll work on the main modifications for the third unit, which is the unit that's using the big howitzer cannon and that one so we're not really going to need to do quite as much work on that because it's basically just kind of adding a few parts here and there on it so it's not that much so the next video we'll work on that we'll work on some finishing touches on the open hatch units and on the regal good unit here and so yeah we'll have another work in progress video coming out for you guys pretty soon thank you so much for watching if you have any uh questions comments suggestions feel free to leave all that down in the comment section below thank you so much and i'll see you guys soon bye guys